Hey, you guys, you're going to want to listen to this whole episode of 90s now because we're going to find out which third of one of our favorite trios from the 90s is going to be a grandma. And I've never seen Kelly so mad and passionate about anything. Uh, and it's all Madonna's fault. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Janet Jackson's not even involved in this one. <laughs> Make sure that you tune in for the full episode of 90s now. Let's go. Kelly, Adam, I'm Sharon. How are you? Hello, <laughs> lady. <laughs> Hello, you guys. You know what? Uh, the wait is over, kind of. Bruce Springsteen started rescheduling shows, uh, except that we're going to have to wait a long time until those shows start happening. Uh, we've got some nudity to deal with today, some wedding news, some baby news, which all kind of go together when you think about it. Um, <laughs> Kelly's going to knock us out with some trivia. Got a 90s rewind coming up, too. And Jada Pinkett Smith was on TV a few nights ago, and she had a lot to say. So let's start there. Oh, Sharon, did you she not stop talking. What's that? No, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I loved the interview, though. I thought she handled herself great. I thought Hoda did a fantastic job. Um, but what was cool, I think that it gave uh it gave some um not personality, but kind of like it gave Jada Pinkett Smith a chance to be Jada, you know, instead of Will Smith's wife, instead of that, you know, B word that was sitting beside him at the Oscars with the, you know, pursed face or whatever it, it, I think allowed her to speak her part. Um, and it really was, the whole thing was about her and, and what they're going through. And we found out a lot of information uh, on that interview. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. She hasn't stopped talking because after she did that interview, she was supposed to go on, I think, with them a few days later on the Today Show. Uh, and I'm pretty sure she was on uh, Kelly and Mark, uh, which would have been a little bit after the Today Show. So, yeah, she's well, she's she's pushing her book, too. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is great because yeah. she's got her own story. She existed long before she got together with Will Smith. Um, their origin story I thought was pretty interesting in that he seemed to be as cocky as you would have expected him to be <laughs> as a as a young man flirting with her while still married. <laughs> See? Um, but yeah, I thought it was cool that they went to her old neighborhood in Baltimore uh, and that she talked about the roots of it. Kelly, you saw it. Adam, did you see it? I didn't see the interview. Uh, yet. It's it's worth watching, I think. What show what show was it on? Like what channel? That was like a, it was an NBC show because it was a, a special uh, Hoda Kotb um, interview with Jada Pinkett Smith. And I, again, I thought it was really well done. Cal, I think you? it might have ran on, is it Dateline or something? Or like it ran some, I think. Uh, so. Yeah, under like a Dateline ba banner. At least it wasn't, you know, Dateline murders, you know, yes. which is <laughs> a lot of what we see on Dateline, which no thanks. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say 2020, but that's ABC. So that's not that one. Right. Yeah, but uh, Hoda is amazing. I love Hoda. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because, as you know, I used to watch the Today Show religiously uh, until they screwed over Ann Curry and, yes. and completely put it on lockdown. Like, I, I literally didn't watch it again. Like, did not watch it again. And uh, then when Matt Lauer got the boot, um, I still didn't watch, but I was very happy when I... I saw Hoda get that gig because she totally deserves it. And she brings yeah. such a good level and she's such a good, she's, she's, she's one of the ones like, a, like a Robin Roberts where like yeah. she handles being newsy, but then yeah. she can totally handle being interviewer and lifestyle girl. Oh yeah. Cause uh, she really brings a personality to it because uh, she's, she's got all the experience that you just mentioned and she makes it conversational, but just when you think it's, you know, Oh, this is nice. She goes in for a, a good question. Yeah, no, she's so a rock star. And I'm I'm sure I'm sure that's why uh because Jada would have had to agree to who's going to interview her, right? For this big yep. deal. So, I'm sure she said, "I'll take that one, please." Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and who wouldn't want to talk to Hoda Kotb and like again, like her and Robin Roberts are so similar in their approach and uh just yeah, you feel like you would spill your guts to either of them. So, yeah. I liked it. I like that uh uh, we were reminded, I think, for a lot of people to have seen Jada Pinkett Smith in the last few years, we're used to seeing her with Will, you know, and her as a mother to, you know, her husband Will's children. And you don't see as much 
uh, about her in the movies, mm-hmm. her experience, her list of credits. And, and she was, uh, you know, when she was coming up and being introduced to the world, she was feisty and kind of had that fierce thing going on and, and talented. So it was mm-hmm. nice to be reminded of all that. I, I love the title of her book too, which is worthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's an important realization for everybody to have that we are all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, good luck with the, the book for Jada Pinkett Smith and good luck to uh, her family. And on we go. What yeah. better way to uh, bridge, uh, you know, a couple of stories because we are going to talk about nudity, <laughs> not, not Jada's and not Will's. Um, <laughs> what better way to bridge it? Uh, but with some trivia. Let's let's give it a try. Nineties <laughs> now trivia. Bing bong. Bing bong. So we'll start with the challenging uh, category: news and politics. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. And I feel like I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I'm going to try hard. So we'll see. Maybe Sharon knows what this is, and maybe Adam does because Adam is quite. Up it, up it. I was like, try, let's, let's try it again. Oh, that it. Rewind that one. Uh, Adam's on quite it. up it. You're on it, Adam, with history. <laughs> Here we go. So news and politics. The Maastricht Treaty formally established which organization in 1992? Adam. Go, Adam. Oh, 1992, you said. Oh, yeah. Two years it. before you were born, little Adam. Um, The European Union. Adam! I was really going for the UN, and then I went, no, that was created way before 1990. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I got one. Ooh, <laughs> Adam, I'm so happy <laughs> for you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> well, Good job. You know, treaties are international things, right? So it had to be big. Yeah, yeah. But I've never heard of uh, the Maastricht. Yeah, tree. M-A-A-S-T-R-I-C-H-T. Well, I learned something today. Yeah. Didn't you know, we what all? know all about what that is, is um, Shane, Kentucky Shane. He'd be like, Kentucky of Shane. course, blah, 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 blah. Like, he would know <laughs> all of this. Please help. Uh, so let's go to a- said, I would have thought the European Union was created before 1990. Like, if you would ask me what year was the UN, the- uh, The EU. The EU created, I would have said like 1973 or something. Well, the only reason I would have thought that it would have been in the 90s is because isn't that when they brought out the euro? Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I would I would have known. The euro like, is only dated from the ni- the 90s? I believe so. It it's would have been pounds and everything. Well, it would make sense that it happened thing. at the same time. So. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Uh, so the <laughs> sport category. Ooh, uh, sports. Sports. So you're both good at these. So um, in which year was the Los Angeles Galaxy soccer franchise founded? LA Galaxy, yep. Sharon? Go, Sharon. 1997. No. Damn it. I'm thinking late 90s. I might be wrong. I'll go for 98. Both wrong. 92. 94. Son of a... We would have got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After about five guesses each. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I funny because when I read it, I actually thought it would have been later nineties. I didn't realize it was that early, so maybe it only came to uh, uh, be after um, David Beckham joined and made it. Yeah, well, he wow. he definitely made it uh, interesting. By the way, uh, just a quick note because uh, as as I know, we all like to support women athletes. Yes, and so uh, and this is in the soccer realm. So I follow certain soccer players uh, specifically that play in the states, and um, Allie Krieger, who plays for Gotham FC, which is in the New York, New Jersey area, mm-hmm. she just retired. Uh, like as of our recording on uh, the Sunday, October the fifteenth, and um. I love how much her team made such a big deal about her online, having her retirement and seeing so many fans being so excited to go watch her last game, even like, and I shouldn't say even, but it's great to see so many male fans like supporting women's soccer. And so my hope is that it continues. Uh, and I know that like uh, Brittany Mahomes is uh, a part, I don't know if she's full owner or part owner of the Kansas city uh, women's team. And I just think it's great that there's so many uh, people uh, starting to invest and help women's soccer grow to where it should be. So that's good. Because even Eli Manning, my former New York Giant uh, quarterback, he's an investor with the Gotham FC team. So, Oh, wow. 
Uh, well, speaking of the New York area or the New Jersey area or both. Were um, we talking about New York and New Jersey? Sorry? Were we talking about New York and New well, Jersey? Didn't you mention the Gotham? Gotham uh, FC. Oh, Gotham there you FC. Go. Yeah, see, so yes, we were in answer to your question, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not following. <laughs> Sorry, he's not here right now. <laughs> uh, one of the kings of New Jersey, Bruce Springsteen, has uh, rescheduled his tour, which is great because he's dealing with the uh, peptic ulcer, which when I was I was out for lunch with my sister and my cousin the other day, and my sister's a nurse, and uh, we were talking about, oh, my cousin said, what, what does he have again? I said, it's a peptic ulcer. And she said, oh, I thought it was a, a bleeding ulcer. Or she said something like that. And my sister said, you know that they're drastically different things. And we're like, yeah, sore stomach. <laughs> Fun to mess with the medical professionals. Anyways, yes, we know that a peptic ulcer is different than a bobo tummy. Uh, but what we also know now is that the tour dates that had to be rescheduled are, and uh, patients being virtuous, anybody with tickets for any of the shows in the States and in Canada will be waiting. Uh, he'll get back on tour as of the 19th of March in Phoenix, and then he'll make his way all the way down that way uh, so March through uh, their shows in April, there's uh, some time off. They'll return in August, uh, then September, and then coming to Montreal, which is where we are, on October 31st, 2024. And then they'll wrap up the tour uh, going through Canada all the way westward to uh, Vancouver by November 22nd. Again, 2024. I laughed when I saw the October 31st Halloween date for us. Cause I'm like, we're not even at Halloween 2023 yet. <laughs> I know he was supposed to be here in November, like just a few weeks yeah. away. So, but you know what? Taylor Swift is still going to be touring at that date. So it's <laughs> still going to feel like it's today. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have to quickly mention this. Uh, so Madonna kicked off her. Yes. Yeah. Are, you, are we talking about that? I'm going to shut up. No, we're not talking about we're it. Not, no, talk about it. Yeah, so I so I didn't I didn't I knew the tour started soon, but I didn't realize that it you know was going to start uh, again as of this past Saturday. Yep. And so again, and a bunch of my feed and like Instagram and Twitter and all that started you know populating with uh, clips from her show and Rosie O'Donnell posted and like all that stuff. And then everything was like super positive, and I was very happy with that, knowing like what a you know trying situation she came through. There we are, she's Madonna right behind Sharon. Um, <laughs> but there's always haters, right? And oh so yeah, some jacknut decided to write uh -oh. a novel. strong words yeah and i can't even remember now the name of the publication but all they did was tear her down was like she's um like as you can see on some of these online clips like they, and so he had actually i'm gonna say he it's probably he um put like uh these little <laughs> like twitter things and it, it's like she's out of breath like oh, she please. can't handle this and look at her massive knee brace right so then like, and the way he was talking or, uh, you know, the author was talking, it made it sound like Madonna had a titanium brace the size of California <laughs> on her knee. And then I look in the Twitter, like on the video, and it's like maybe a support sleeve, which she yeah. probably just tweaked recently. And I'm sure by show five, she won't even have this thing on. And okay. then in my head, I'm like, and you tried dancing and singing to 40 hit pop songs and see how well you're doing like at, yeah. at when Spotify. you're 65 years old yeah exactly yeah. anything that i saw she is more than ready she yeah. was ready to start obviously and then she got sort of sidelined mm -hmm. uh with whatever she had going on and she's taking her time and she's there it's not even like yeah she's okay she sounds amazing it sounds like like, you're not going to go and say, she's doing pretty good for 65. She's yeah. going to be amazing. She will have set the bar once again for a, a new generation of people to go, oh, that's how you do it. And like the, the actual worst thing you could say is, oh, you know, she's doing okay for 65. Mm -hmm. Oh, You can't say anything worse than that. If that's yeah. what you're feeling and you're not like, you're feeling like you were expecting better. And why would you? Like, yeah. Ugh. And the thing is, yeah. knowing Madonna, like as competitive as she is and how aware she is of her reputation, she's never going to put herself in a situation where she looks stupid. No. And because why would you damage your legacy? She I, could learn, I could learn from her. I've done that before. <laughs> You've damaged your legacy before? <laughs> I have. <laughs> why do you think I'm doing Sober October this month? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> good one. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, good good for Madonna. And it's funny too, because I, I read another article that was super positive about her show and, and they brought up about when she had done, I don't know if it was the um, European, like the Brit Awards or something, but this was, I think 2018, where remember the cape like she fell down the stairs yeah. she, remember that? she like, felt like yeah. four steps that was yeah amazing. and they talked about how she literally like because he i guess this person the author of, of this article was in that room when that happened and he said yeah. like you heard her fall like you heard the noise and he's like she bounced up like a kangaroo and Whoa. just got back to work and he's like there's no way that other some other people would have been able to manage that to get right back up and keep going like it's nobody's business so there's no way she would put herself out there if she wasn't prepared so agreed haters need to go somewhere else but again it's like we were saying before they always have to have something negative to say because that's what people go what are they saying so that they buy or they or they read or they click or whatever they do to get that publication attention mm -hmm. but i mean people who know better know better so yeah. By the way, I was so angry. I went on a rant on on the air. I was like, I actually warned people too. I was like, coming up after nine o'clock, you're going to hear why I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> she's mad and she's going to tell you. Yeah, really. I'm sure. And I'm sure, I just pictured my audience listening like, what's under her like thing today? What's going on? Anyways. Well, you know what? It would have made you feel better. And maybe it did in the moment. Um, Lenny Kravitz, new <laughs> video. <laughs> we all know how comfortable Kelly was seeing Peekaboo Lenny with those soft leather pants from a few years back where they split in the seam and Peekaboo came out. Yeah, There was no leather or there is no leather, at least within the first minute of this new video. Adam, have you seen it? I have. Multiple times, I bet, like me. No, just um, one. But just one. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> TK421 is the name of the song. Blue Electric Light is the name of the album that's due in March. Um, and it's a great song, great, super sexy, chargy Lenny. And like I said, for the first minute of the video, at least he's, he's naked. But then and... he does get into a soft leather pant. Well, <laughs> did you see that? Because he gets into the soft leather pant naked and, and then gets into the tub, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous for the pants. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, he has been crunching some abs. He has been doing some uh, some squats. He looks fantastic, like a specimen, I think. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, the music. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks great. Sounds great. Super looking forward to the new album. Again, the song is called TK421. Now we can check nudity off of our list of things we were going to talk about today. <laughs> um, but in a real 90s now kind of way we can give a quick congratulations to uh, rosanda thomas chili yeah. from tlc who will become a grandmother also happening in march her son and his wife will welcome their baby after what they described were multiple fertility attempts is that correct mm -hmm. and now they've got a little girl coming in the spring and the uh the wedding part of our promise for uh 90s now was the congratulations that go to wolfgang van halen and his now wife andrea they've tied the knot well, I loved what she said about what they were trying to do for the wedding was that they were trying to bring all of their closest family and friends together that the past few years, not only with the world, but also with personal tragedies haven't been the easiest, but we wanted to create this wedding as a celebration, not only just for us to get married, but a celebration for the people we love. And that's what all weddings should be about. Exactly. Yeah. I they love that happy. they said that they left a, a seat open for Eddie who would have sat. Oh, yeah. Really cool. Amazing. eh? Mm. I love that he is so committed with his music to, uh, I think, not only channel what his father taught him, but still impress him with that, with what he learned from him. Yeah. And so far, so good. His music, his albums are very good. And he oh plays all the instruments on it. So continued success to little Wolfie, yeah. <laughs> who's now a husband. <laughs> They've been together for eight years. So like, this is not some rash decision. Like this is no. a, a long-term thing so happy for him yeah it's great you guys ready for a, a an official 90s rewind ready Worse. ready ready yeah we go we're going back to 1998 uh back to more times of togetherness in the will smith world um the fourth single from his album big willie style was just the two of us it not only featured um you know, uh, the channeling or the sampling of uh, the song of the same name from, you know, 20-ish years prior. Um, 
but also featured Trey, his first son, and Jada Pinkett Smith pregnant with their son, Jaden. Oh, yeah. Super cool. Decent tune, too. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, <laughs> Faith Hill was already a star in the country music charts. And with one smooch, she crossed over to the mainstream chart with this kiss. This kiss. Uh, Aerosmith had one of the big ballads, probably creating makeout sessions all over the place. In the summer of 1998, that's when the Armageddon movie came out, soundtrack along with it, and I Don't Want to Miss a Thing was still on the charts in the fall of 98. Did I, tell, did I already tell you how much I love power ballads? How can you not? Mm. How do you dance to them? Uh, Slowly. What's this big guitar Slowly. solo? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, Monica enjoying the second of three number one songs from the Boy Is Mine album? That second one was The First Night. It was a pretty sexy tune, too. Um, it was also around this time in 1998 that we learned the term Chickity China, the Chinese chicken. You have a drumstick and your brain stops ticking. Okay. Thanks, Bare yeah. Naked Ladies. That was Bare Naked Ladies in one really? week. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> also, I number to to those lyrics. You got to listen to the whole song and figure out what. Uh, and again, Chickadee China. Not sure. But number one, that's <laughs> <laughs> one week was uh, number one uh, back around this time in 1998. And that is your 90s rewind. Thank you, Sharon. Very nice. A uh, quick You're listener welcome. question from Leslie before yeah. we wrap things up. Uh, Leslie wanted to know uh, if we could each name one song from the 90s uh in this category so like three categories so your favorite pop song from the 90s my favorite god R honestly i know I favorite need a... r&b song favorite rock song god i'm gonna go with uh, r and i'll pick just out of the top off the top of my head and then i'll go no also this one uh i love too close by next i yep. just love the vibe the groove on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh pop song God, pick a Mariah Carey song. Honey, I'll pick Honey. Okay, because that way it also gets to be R and B. <laughs> rock, rock, rock in the nineties. Uh, just because they popped into my head today, uh, I'll pick uh, Tonic. <laughs> tonic. Uh, tonic, the name of the band. Tonic, and the song was um, "If You Could Only See." Mm. It's, Darren, it's not my number. That's... It's just I'm just picking in the nineties pocket. That's all. That's good, Adam. Honestly, there's I I I I can't answer that question. I know. Not, not with prior uh uh for like uh, I I need to prepare for this question, <laughs> Kelly. How, how, how dare you do this? How to me? dare you? Kelly. I can surprise you. Can I? If I answer, can you take some time to think? I'll try. Okay, I'll, I'll Google some lists and I'll I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back. So uh, for me, R and B again, way too many to choose from, but I'll pick my girl Janet Jackson. I get lonely. Nice. Yeah. Uh pop song i would also say like any mariah carey song but i'll try to be different and so i will say uh probably whitney Houston. i'm every woman nice yeah good one and then rock my man lenny kravitz are you gonna go my way oh nice yeah yeah, yeah. love that whole video love the amazing drummer that is cindy blackman oh yeah the whole thing yeah oh, cool Okay, I'll I'll, tr I'll try to get some songs your way. Uh, I think rock is going to be fairly easy. Yep. Um, well, I guess it's rock. I guess it's pop rock, but Iris Goo Goo Dolls is, okay. a, is an all-time favorite of mine. Nice. Um, pop songs. Did Britney have any songs in the 90s, or did that happen after the 90s? No, she was there. Like, what songs did Britney do in the 90s? Because I feel like I'm going to go Maybe for Maybe one more time. Wasn't that 96? Oh, mm. Love it. I'm going to take that one. And what was the last category? Uh, R&B. I don't know a lot of R&B from the 90s. Ugh. You do. Do you I? Do. Yes. Um, I'll go for anything Usher did in the 90s. Oh, very good. Oh, very good. Good pick. Yeah. I'm going, I know I'm going for more recent stuff, but, you know, that's what I know. I'm but... going to add another category for Leslie just so that she knows. The one hit wonder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How about that? One hit I'll... wonder? One hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> We've devastated Adam. Not another one. <laughs> There's a lot. Oh. Um, Karen, can I go? Can go. I go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right said Fred. Too sexy. Oh, I heard that the other day. That is not a good song, Kelly. <laughs> but it's amazing. <laughs> it's a good song. 
Uh, I'm going to pick the new Radicals. You get what you give. Because oh, there you go. That's this many awesome. years later, that song just gets better and better. It's so positive. I love it. Yeah. Um, would you consider Tom Cochrane to be a one-hit wonder? No. <laughs> and would you consider Gin Blossoms to be a one-hit wonder? They had like four. <laughs> would you consider uh, Lifehouse to be a one-hit wonder? Oh, I don't, is that even... I think they had two, but they had a signature song, so... Because Hang By a Moment is a great, great song. Great song. Good yeah. pick. By I the way, I would this. also say, uh, even though I don't... Because I really liked her whole album, but RuPaul... Uh, he put out uh, Supermodel in 1992. Oh, yeah. Such a great, fun song. And the rest of, like, he has a song called, I think it's Back to My Roots. It's just, like, the whole album is super fun. But, like, obviously, he he kind of is a one-hit wonder because I think, like, most people only know that one track from him. But, yeah. Um, I hate to be nitpicky, Adam, but Hanging by a Moment was 2001. Okay, what about... Um, what about what about Unbelievable by EMF? That there we go. Very good. The 90s. Yeah. yeah. That they takes us right back to the beginning. Good job. You're unbelievable. <laughs> I just love those songs that have like um like a cappella drop. Yes, so yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did I tell you you were unbelievable? Wow. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times, you guys. Done now. Look at that. We're at the end of yet another fun chat. Uh, thanks. Thanks to everybody for uh, for showing up. You always do. We appreciate it. Thanks for finding us wherever it is that you do that and passing on the good word. Um, Shane, we'll expect to hear back from you about the Maastricht treaty or whatever Kelly yes. said <laughs> the, the treaty with the extra vowels from the 90s and uh thank you very much for listening to 90s now still happening <laughs>